Just going to go over the uh, Vitig reactions, one of the more famous of the named reactions in organic chemistry and certainly something you'll come across in your first year of undergraduate chemistry. Basically the Vitig reaction is used to form olefins or alkenes. I'll just write that down actually. So um, an olefin, olefin, sometimes an alkene is sometimes referred to as a, uh, sorry, an alkene, that's a L. So it's a very, very powerful method because it basically, we just change the color here. I'm doing a bit of retrosynthesis, which you'll come across later on. Um, just chop that in half there. Um, it basically um, shows you that you can form um, alkene species from one component, one molecule there with another molecule here. I'll just get rid of that. Just to illustrate a point. Okay, so we have triphenophosphine. This reacts with an alkyl halide to give this intermediate here, this phosphonium intermediate, which then reacts w with a base upon addition of the base. In this case, it's butyl lithium. It's quite a strong base to form this ilid intermediate. We've come across ilids before, but if this is your first tutorial, an ilid is basically um, a charged species where the charges are separated by um, two atoms, so other adjacent atoms. You might have come across ilids before in zwitterions, like amino acids, but the charge is separated a longer distance. So these are, are ilids, and they're usually written as ilids um, rather than a double bond. You can you imagine that electron here going into here? Uh, simply because it's a better representation. There is no bond uh, because the orbitals are of different energy and shape to allow this, these electrons to occupy it. So we write them as ilids sometimes. Um, so this ilid, the Wittig ilid, reacts, I'll just write that there actually, so ilid is spelled ilid with an e. Sometimes it's spelled without the il, e, but you'll probably come across it in your undergraduates with the e, so that can be missing sometimes as well in the uh, in how you write ilid, but it's pronounced ilid. And this reacts with uh, an aldehyde or a ketone to form an olefin or an alkene. So it's a very, very powerful methodology. Okay, so let's go into the reaction mechanism for the Wittig reaction. So we take triphenylphosphine, pH 3p. Um, pH, by the way, is phenyl, and that's, that's this group, just a phenyl group. All right, a wiggly line there just to show this. So the phenyl here, so there's three of these phenyl groups stuck onto phosphorus. And sometimes I've come across it and it's written with the Greek symbol uh, theta there um, instead of pH. I have come across that in my time. Um, I don't know why people use it, uh, but they but they do. So if you ever see this, so if, it's, if triphenophosphine is ever written like that, um, that's triphenophosphine. I don't know where that comes from, but like I say, it's, uh, it does exist. It is out there, so beware. Okay, I'll just get rid of them. Right, so triphenophosphine reacts with an alkyl halide, R1, R2. I'll try and keep the numbers the same. I'm going to write this proton on because I'm going to, in the step after this, I'm going to deprotonate that, so I'll leave it on there, just to, uh, so there's your alkyl halide, so X is a halide, X equals halide, you have to forgive me when my D's are a bit more like L's sometimes, so the lone pair of electrons on triphenylphosphine, let's just do that, get a red, can't get a red. Here we are. Oh, what am I doing? Of triphenylphosphine attack the 
in an SN2 reaction. So there's two, there's two, there's two moles of, well, two molecules, should, should I say, two molecules reacting in the slowest step. So it's uh, it's bimolecular, and the two, it's a nucleophilic, so this is your nucleophile, this is where the N comes from, and it's a substitution reaction, so this X is being substituted with phosphorus, so that's what that means. Uh, you might have to forgive me if my colours change throughout this because I'm having a bit of difficulty. I don't know what's going on here. Okay, so it's an SN2 reaction to give this species. And I will write phenol like that. So in an SN2 reaction, the centre actually inverts. If it's chiral, you're left with a proton there and you're left with X minus Okay, so you've got to sort your charges out. Now the overall charge comes because this phosphorus is donating its electron density into here, uh, so that becomes positive. So it's donated its electrons, if you will, and obviously the electrons go onto the halide there. So that's um, the first step to make that phosphonium ion. And then we add a base. Typically you add butyl lithium. Uh, low temperature. Uh, you do it at low temperature because the the uh, it's very reactive and you get butane as a byproduct, and you want to keep that preferably in the liquid state and and heat it up slowly later on. So you get butyl lithium. So butyl lithium can effectively be written as Bu minus for reaction mechanism purposes. And I will try. Try and get a red. So that comes in, picks off that. But these electrons now just lie on that carbon. Okay. So they lie on the carbon there to give this species here one or two negative charge. Okay, so that carbon's now got a lone pair of electrons um, just resting on there. Now they're probably in a p orbital rather than sp3 type of orbital. Um, but they're basically and they're not bonding to this phosphorus because of the orbital overlap doesn't allow it. So this is a nilid. Like I explained before, this is a nilid. And this is your vitig nilid. Okay. So the next step is to react to this with a, a ketone or a aldehyde. There's a bit of controversy on this step, but basically if I label this, I'll do an aldehyde. So this reacts here. Do I get red? Comes in attacks that carbonyl and the electrons go on here. Okay. To give this species slightly difficult to blue there. So this reacts here onto the carbonyl and puts the electron density here. So this gives the betaine inter intermediate here or minus R3, oh that's not very good R. Let's put a bit more volume into that one and I'll just finish these off as well. R1, R2. Now we can go into a lot more detail with the Vitig reaction because there's a lot of um, more interesting information here. But for this, this is more this is more of a beginner's guide to the Vitig reaction. Um, so this is the betaine. Oops, let me do that again. So this is the betaine. 
I'll write it in capitals because I'm having a bit of trouble with my pen. Okay, so this is the bed ten, which then forms this um, oxophosphatine intermediate, pH 3, B R1, R2, the carbon's there, oxygen's there, and you've got R3 and H. Not doing a very good job of this, but that's a, that's a three. Okay, so were the um, the more advanced Vitic reaction would get a bit technical here, would be the uh, the actual orientation of R1, R2, R3 and H, but I won't do that in this one, I'll do that in a, a future tutorial. And you can actually determine the orientation for the, uh, the E and Z isomers of your alkene and final product. For this one, we'll, we'll just stick to the the basics. In that, you form this uh, betaine intermediate, which then um, goes on to the oxophosphatine intermediate. So this is a, a called an oxa. If I can spell that, oxa phos betaine. Okay. So that's an oxophosphatine intermediate. And this then breaks down because triphenylphosphine oxide, which is a byproduct of this reaction, is incredibly stable in, in terms of uh, the rest of the reaction mechanism. So uh, so this breaks down. Very simple uh, reaction going like that. And I'll just slide this up a little bit. So that goes to give the final product, which isn't triphenylphosphine oxide. So that should, that crashes out, and then you get your final product here, which is your alkene R1, R2, the proton there, and R3. So a proton's a hydrogen. Okay, so that's. That's the Wittig reaction. If you look to the actual uh, orientation of this as well, if if the the, the Wittig reaction is actually quite influenced by the steric hindrance of this intermediate, or this intermediate, but it's probably this intermediate. It's probably the easiest to view it. Um, so that will determine actually which um, whether you get the E or Z. Obviously, I've just put R1, R2, and R3 three here, uh, but the E and Z will be dictated to by uh, by the actual uh, alkyl groups or whatever's on there, um, which I've not covered in this um, tutorial because it's just a beginner's uh, Vitic tutorial, really. Um, but it is very interesting. I do encourage you to look into this in a bit more detail and also the variance of this um, reaction as well uh, so the oh, Horn of Odds reaction and things like that which I will cover and there will be a, a, a link on the side of this one to those reactions um, it's, a, it's a really good reaction this and so this is the Wittig reaction Wittig reaction and Whenever you see a double bond, when you're doing a retrosynthesis, or you're looking at a natural product, and you're wondering how uh, how chemists can actually um, build these molecules up, then whenever you see a double bond, you should be thinking along the lines of cutting it across there uh, and going backwards to these components here and here, and thinking I can probably put them together with a Wittig reaction. And that is the Wittig reaction.